Picture this. You're living in an American stereotypical home in the Great Plains, let's say in Moore, Oklahoma. A tornado warning is issued for your area, so you go to your safe space in the interior bathroom of the house. Before you know it, the ground begins to shake and a roar starts to overtake the household. You bury your head into your knees as the roar grows louder and only hope that you can make it out of this situation alive. But just as fast as it came, the roar subsides. And you think, man, maybe we just dodged a bullet. You pick your head up and look around and notice that the walls are still standing. It's pretty good to see that your house has finally survived until you look upward and realize you see the sky. How is it that the walls of your house are still standing, but the roof above you is completely gone? You see, there's a critical weak point in many houses across the United States. And let's take a look at where you park your cars. Attached garages and garage doors are the critical weak point in many homes in tornado events. Let's dive into the science of attached garages in tornadoes. To really understand the attached garage problem, we must first dissect the anatomy of houses with attached garages. From there, we can break down how structures behave in tornadic environments. Once we get this fundamental knowledge in place, we then can look at some small scale models in our wind tunnel and then put all the, all the physics together in order to paint a picture on why garages are a structural weak point in many American homes. Let's take one of the stereotypical homes that we see in Moore, Oklahoma. Much of suburban Oklahoma City Metro is littered with these single floor residences with shallow pitched roofs, brick exterior, and one or even two large garage bay doors. On a surface level, these look like pretty sturdy structures given the brick masonry, as well as many of these developments being relatively new. However, all it takes is one weak point for a catastrophic failure. If we were to construct a theoretical model of this house and take a cross section right through the structure, we can examine the interface between the garage door and the surrounding walls. Garage doors are typically a series of panels linked together by hinges. Each panel has a set of rollers that ride in a track. These tracks are typically anchored into the framing of the house to distribute the load from the panels while the door is being opened or closed, or there's some load being implemented into it like wind loading, for example. Now that we've identified the structural elements of a garage door system, let's see what makes them susceptible to failure in high wind loading scenarios. Taking a look at our cross section of the house, notice the vertical supports in the frame of the house. These are what are called studs, and they provide rigidity to the walls of the home. While the studs and other wooden elements of the frame provide the main structure of the house, Additional structural elements exist, including the exterior brick wall, sheathing, and even some forms of insulation. Moving to the garage door, most of the structural integrity of the door comes from vinyl cladded sheets of aluminum that make up the panels. The rigidity differs greatly from that of the rest of the house. Not only is the rigidity different from the rest of the house's structure, it is also supported by the rails at either end, with minimal support in the middle. If we were to place a distributed wind load across the wall with a garage door, the even distribution of studs in the wall will disperse the load evenly into the rest of the housing frame. Meanwhile, the garage portion is only supported on either end, so as the door is wind loaded, a large bending moment is subjected to the door. This bending moment causes extreme internal stresses on the door's structural material. If the load is strong enough, this will become the primary failure point of the structure, allowing the wind to explosively enter the household. So what exactly happens once the garage door is breached? On an extremely fundamental scale, tornadoes are areas of extreme low pressure compared to its surroundings. Therefore, the atmosphere around it wants to equalize that pressure difference. Before the tornado strikes a home, the pressure inside the home is similar to that of the atmosphere around it. As a tornado overtakes a house, the atmospheric pressure around the house is now much lower than what it was inside the house, since it hasn't had time to equalize. The structure of the house is holding back the pressure that's trying to force the air inside of the house from trying to equalize to the area of lower pressure. Once the wind-loaded garage door succumbs to the tornado, 
the wind greatly amplifies the internal pressures of the house as the wind rushes in with great force. This becomes too much for the rafters of the house to handle, blowing the roof right off the top of the house. Now that we've got an understanding of how these failures occur, let's use some of our small scale models in order to visualize the flow. I modeled a simplified version of the house we were looking at earlier in my CAD software and then printed it on my 3D printer. From there I cut out a piece of Lexan and glued it to the bottom of the 3D printed structure so we could view what was happening inside the house as I compartmentalized the garage from the rest of the interior of the house. The main takeaway from this wind tunnel testing is that there is high pressure being built up in the garage cavity of this 3D model. The smoke that we are using to visualize the flow is not being allowed to enter the structure due to this high pressure. On this small scale, the pressures are relatively minimal, but if we were to scale this up to a full-size house and implement a tornadic wind load, there would be extreme pressures placed on the structural members of this household. What is also worth noting is the visualization of the drag that's taking a place across the surfaces of the house. Noted by tornado damage expert Tim Marshall in his analysis of the May 3rd, 1999 Moore F5, many homes suffered garage door failures, many of which were on the outer edges of the tornado. What is also fascinating about the garage door failures is that there weren't just failures from external wind loading, but also garage doors blowing outwards due to the extreme pressure differentials that we discussed earlier. Ian Giamenko, a wind engineer and meteorologist researcher with the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety, has researched garage door failures in high wind events extensively. He has stated that after a garage door failure, homes sustain significant structural roof damage 60% of the time. Homes impacted that have garage doors that stay intact only 10% of the time sustain significant structural roof damage. From observations and damage surveys by engineers like Tim Marshall, to research engineers like Ian looking at full-scale models of homes in wind tunnels, it is clear that garage doors are the extreme weak point in the vast majority of American homes that are susceptible to tornadoes like the ones in the Great Plains. This discussion begs the question, of whether or not there is an optimal garage design for homes that is more resistant to tornadic events. According to current research, the answer is still rather inconclusive in terms of whether or not there's a best placement practice to minimize garage door failures and high wind events. So now that we know the dangers of attached garages in a tornadic or high wind event, what can we do to keep ourselves safe? When buying a home or upgrading a garage door, be sure to pay the extra few dollars for one that's rated for high winds. Many homes around the Gulf of Mexico actually have reinforced garage doors that can survive sustained winds from hurricanes. While it's common around the Gulf of Mexico, it is not common practice in tornado prone regions like the Great Plains. It's important to understand the layout of your home. If you're fortunate enough to have a storm shelter in your house, then that is the obvious first place to seek refuge in the event of a tornado. Basements are always the next best option if your home has one. Many areas of the country do not have basements, however, so the next best room is the most interior room of the house, like a bathroom or a closet. Ensure that your safe space has a small emergency kit with items such as shoes, flashlights, head protection, and of course the first aid kit. There are links below in the description for how to prepare an emergency kit for your safe space in the event of a tornado. The best place to shelter your vehicles in a severe weather event turns out to be one of the worst for your house's long-term survival in the event of being impacted by a tornado. We've learned in this video that garage doors are ultimately the structural weak point in many homes and can wreak havoc on roof systems in the event of a garage door failure. If there's anything to be learned from this, there's an extreme emphasis on what meteorologists say when there's a tornado warning issued. Get to the lowest, most interior place in your home in order to sustain the best chance of survival. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you learned something today and be sure to stay safe out there.